Hi, this is lesson 4.6, volumes of solids and known cross sections, including discs and washers. When we've dealt with area, which we've done before, we had the definite integral, and this would represent our height of our rectangles that we have over here. And this would be the width. So this right here is our delta x. And so it's base times height. This is an area formula. Now the integral symbol, it looks like an S because that is an S, a representative of an S. And that tells us that it is the great summing machine. And what that means is that I add up an infinite number of these rectangles with width as delta x goes to zero. And that's what this is doing. So this is the height times the width. And so that would be two dimensions. Now we're going to get into the great summing machine being three dimensions and adding up all of those. So we're going to get volume out of this. So to get three dimensions now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the area and multiply it by a width. So the area is two dimensions multiplied by a width. That's going to give me three dimensions. So the area of a square, we know that. Rectangle, semicircle, triangle, equilateral triangle. We know all of these things. And so with that, we can take now the area multiplied by the width. This is two dimensions times one dimension. This is pretty small for me to write, but that would give me a total of three dimensions. And this is the great summing machine, and it's going to add up all of those little areas and give them some width to give us overall volume. And so we have what we call cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. And this will give us the volume because we're taking the area times the width. And then we can also run the cross sections horizontally. I call these cuts. You can run them like this for dy, and you can run them like this for dx, because that's delta x. This would be delta y. So pretty much for these things, if you can draw the picture and then go ahead and find out what the area for that particular figure is, that cross section, you're going to be in business. So number one, find the volume. There it is, the volume of the solid whose base is a triangle bounded by this line, which we do have already over here and then x equal to zero, y equal to zero, whose cross sections are squares. And I'm gonna to try to draw this, and I'm, I'll try to get this together on a, another video too for pictures, maybe not this one, but we'll show you some other ways to represent this. So then my cross sections are going to be this cut right here that I do have for you. That cut is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis, and then the width of this thing is going to be delta x. And now what we want to do is try to grow a square out of this. And so, and some of you will be able to kind of picture this, some of you won't. So I have my square, and really I'm going to have an infinite number of squares. I can have more cuts here, so they're going to be smaller when I get here, even smaller when I get here. So the volume changes over the interval. And so when we do that, the function that we have here is going to dictate what our height is at any particular time, or the base of the, of the side. Okay, so let's see how this works. Here's the volume. Volume is equal to a to b of a times dx. Well, what kind of shape do we have? Well, we have a square. The area of a square is s squared. Well, what is s? Well, s is going to be the length of this cut right here. Well, the length of that cut is simply the height of my function there. So when I do this, this is going to be from 0 to 1 because this is my interval that I'm working off of. And then I'm going to take negative 2x plus 2 squared. That's why this is different than that original one that I did at the beginning. This is my area times a width. This is my width right here. This, this delta x is going to be my width, and so I'm going to get volume. So notice the difference from what I had at the beginning up here 
This is just two dimensions, and then this one would be my three dimensions, so that gives me volume. This one gives me area. Number two says, set up, but do not integrate integrals for the volume of the solids with the same base as in example one, but whose cross sections are semicircles, perpendicular to the x-axis. So in other words, my cut's going to be exactly the same, but I want a semicircle. So right now, you can already see that my area, cross-sectional area, is going to be smaller than the area of the square. So this would be the cross-section that I'm looking at. And if I bring this down here, notice that my radius is one-half the diameter. And my di diameter is the length of the cut. So D is equal to negative 2x plus 2. So if I put this all together, I get the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared, which is going to be equal to 1 half pi. And then my radius is going to be 1 half of that. So it's going to be negative 2x plus 2 all divided by 2. And then I have to square that. So if we set this up, once again, this is 0 to 1 because that's where my semicircles will run from. I have all these cuts. And that would be dx. So what are my x's running from? They're running from 0 to 1. And then I'm going to end up with 1 half pi. I'm going to run out of room here. Sorry about this. So volume is a of x times d of x. And so here's my a of x dx. Now I'd like you to notice something. A lot of times these things just end up with a multiplier. If I take out this one half and this one half squared, I'm going to get one eighth. And so if I look at semicircles, I'm going to get a constant multiple of pi over eight. So I can go from zero to one. And then I'm just going to have negative two x plus two quantity squared dx. So my question is, how does this compare to what I did up here. Well, they're identical except for this constant multiple out in front. And in fact, for a semicircle, this constant multiple will be always the same. So if you can f set up this square thing, you're going to be in business most of the time. So number three, set up, but do not integrate an integral for the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by this curve and this curve. So I've drawn it over here and whose cross sections are rectangles of height one-fourth perpendicular to the x-axis. So this right here will be my region of my base. And then I need to do the cuts that are perpendicular to the x-axis again. So I'm going to have a cut right here. And that's important to draw, I think. And then they say that the height is always going to be one-fourth for this rectangle. So if I pull this aside like this, this height is going to be one-fourth, and then this width is going to be the... This width is going to be the height of that cut. The height of that cut will be top minus bottom. In this case, it would be negative x squared plus 2 minus x. So if you ever want to find the length of a cut, you do it just like we did in the previous exercise. This height from here to there will be just the length of the cut, top minus bottom. So that's where we're getting that from. To figure out where my cuts run from, I know that I need this point and I need this point. So I need to solve this simultaneous equation in order to find the values of x to find my limits of integration. So I did the algebra there for you. So I go from negative 2 to 1. So this x-coordinate is negative 2, and this one is 1. I don't need to find the y-coordinates because I'm just dealing in x. So we set up our definite integral. This is going to be negative 2 to 1 of a of x times d of x. I need this area. Well, it's a rectangle, so it's going to be base times height. So I get base times height times dx, that small width. And so now this volume will be negative 2 to 1. My base is this right here. So it's going to be x squared, negative x squared, plus 2 
minus x times my height. Well, what is the height of all these rectangles? There it is right there, 1 fourth times dx. And so then that would be your setup for the volume for these rectangles, cross sections that we do have. These will probably be slow, very slow going for you at first. Keep with it and you, all of a sudden you'll become an expert sooner or later with this. So just hang tough and keep going with it. Number four will move us into dy because our cuts will be perpendicular to the y-axis. So we want to set up integrals for the volumes of solids whose base is the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 and whose cross sections are equilateral triangles. So a couple things going on here. First of all, we're going to be in dy, so our cuts are going to be horizontal. So I'm going to be like this. And so this would be delta y, which equates to dy. And then the cross sections are equilateral triangles. So if we know that the area of the square is S squared, I drew a picture here. There's the square. And then I have the equilateral triangle, which is going to be inside. And so that's just going to be a relationship to that area of the square. So if I do my base, my base is S. And then my height is going to be square root of 3 over 2 times S because this is a 30, 60, 90 right in here. So if I go area is equal to 1 half base times height, that's going to be S times square root of 3 over 2 S. That's where we get the square root of 3 over 4 S squared. Well, this is just a constant multiple based on S squared. Oh, you just have to know that. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this one out. Since this is dy now, I need x in terms of y. So if I take this equation here and solve for x, I'm going to get, if I can get this done, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. That's x in terms of y. That means that over here, I have square root of 1 minus y squared. And right here, I have negative square root of 1 minus y squared. Well, if I put that length of that cut together, that's just going to be two of those lengths. I hope you can kind of figure that one out. Otherwise, we can also say that this is x, and then this is equivalent x on the other side. So this whole length is 2x. This is one of the x's, so we're just twice that. So my area for an equilateral triangle will just be a square root of 3 over 4 multiplier, and then this is my s squared. And so when I set up my integral then, this is going to run from, well, what does it run from? My y cuts start down here, because these are going to be y's now, and they're going to run up to here. So that's going to go from negative 1 to 1. And then it's just going to be square root of 3 over 4, times 2 square root of 1 minus y squared quantity squared dy. How many dimensions? There's two, there's the third, so we have volume. Beautiful. And with our constant multiple rule, we can write this like this, negative 1 to 1 of 2 square root of 1 minus y squared, y squared dy. This is the multiple, and then here is just like s squared y. And so that's just a relationship coming from our area up here. Now we're going to have rectangles for part b that are growing out of this circle. Here's my base, which is my delta y. That's the same picture that I have up here. And then the height of all these rectangles is going to be 3 times the base. And so if I can find the area of the square and multiply by uno, dos, tres, we should be in business. So I'm going to have my additional multiplier of 3 times, this is my s, and I'm going to square it. D, uh, I don't need the dy yet. Okay, that's just the area. So if I set this up, my volume is going to be from negative 1 to 1, and then I'm going to have the 3 times the 2, 1 minus y squared quantity squared dy. And if I really want to write this with a multiplier out in front, I can take the 2 out too, but that's part of the s. So 
So I'm kind of showing this for effect. So this would be my definite integral that I do have. Many of these you can do then with just using a constant multiple in order to multiply by what the volume is when you just do squares. And so that becomes a very easy way to do most of these. Now some other ones you might have to interpret and then uh, use just area, set up area for that particular situation. But I kind of like using these constant multiples because you relate back to the square every time. And these two are not an example that I did, but they'll show up sometimes. If I have the side of a base as a base for an isosceles right triangle, then the area is just going to be one half as much. Hypotenuse as a base, ooh, it's one fourth. Hypotenuse you think is bigger, but really the multiplier becomes smaller because our shape is one fourth of that square. And next up, we want to look at full circles, in other words, discs that are formed by revolving about an axis. They don't follow necessarily these cross-sectional patterns, but we do use the great summing machine to add up the area of a circle. What's the area of the circle? Oh, area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Yes, that's what we're going to be working off of. 